what, 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 let's start um, with the basics. So this is, um, uh, we call it Sync Next Gen. So it is a uh, new uh, generation of Sync compared to Sync 3. Okay. Everything you see in vehicles up to model year 19, model year 20 is what we call Sync 3. This is Sync Next Gen. Okay. We will have an official name shortly, but right now we just call it Next Gen. Okay. But the foundation of it is a brand new engine, brand new um, system on a chip that drives it. It's probably somewhere around two times the performance and the compute power of the previous generation. Cool. Um, allows us to drive uh, higher size, higher resolution displays. So for example, the Mach-E um, uh, version of this next gen is, um, uh, you know, has a full HD screen, so uh, more than double the pixels of any screen you've seen before, plus, uh, you know, 15 inch, which is fairly large. Now what that allows us to do is to drive a slightly more complex UI, where uh, more things are always on the front front screen as opposed to having having to be buried one okay. or two levels deep. Cool. So um, um, always optimized to uh, ensure that uh, frequently used functions are uh, the fewest possible touches away. Okay. So that's not novel to us. Everyone does that. Yeah. But you know, having a bigger real estate allows you to to organize your screen differently. Um, so that's on the hardware side. So 15 inch portrait. Um, can't show it to you here, but take my word for it. This is a physical knob. Yes, I've seen it. It's yeah. a, like a floating knob. It's a nice gadget, nice gizmo. Um, uh, does have a nice, uh, you know, mechanical click to it. It okay. allows you to adjust volume and uh, you don't even need to look because uh, it's always there and you can calibrate your hand reach cool. based on its, uh, you know, the fact that it's a physical button. Um, the cabin controls are all uh, in the lower uh, quarter of the screen and uh, they, they don't go away, so you're always a touch away. So things like, uh, you know, seat, um, uh, heating, cooling, right, that you see, uh, uh, basically steering wheel, uh, fan, um, fairly nice, uh, you know, uh, slick UI, um, um, uh, nice graphical uh, implementation of how you can adjust your um, airflow in the cabin <coughs> with, uh, with the representation of what's blowing and where. So nothing new here, just the just way in which it's always there as opposed to having to go into a climate button or some other cabin control button sure. and, and go. Um, what we are introducing in this, um, in this version of the platform is, and this is unique to Mach-E, uh, what we call, we call them uh, uh, dash cards. Dash cards are basically what controls this uh, ribbon of the screen and it's um, called them um, uh, little uh, icons. Actually, there are bigger icons than what a typical OS icon would be on your PC or okay. on your phone. Okay. But the idea is that they are icons of your most uh, commonly used uh, uh, functions of the car. Cool. And um, the way the way we do it is you click, you click on the one that you want. It brings it into the top portion of the screen and then it rearranges the dash cards so that you have a history of the last used functions from left to right. So that gives you an easy way to go back to the previously used one because you know it's always on the leftmost side of your dash card ribbon. Cool. Um, the, above the dash cards, of course, it's the maximized version of the currently used app. Um, so for example, this is your, uh, <coughs> your radio screen, right? Where even here there is a, a slick implementation of uh, um, what, what you would typically need to do, which is tuning, uh, switching to a particular station, but uh, just a, a nice way to organize uh, 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 basically your radio functions. This thing times out once in a while, it goes to a demo mode. <laughs> but but um, the dash cards allow you to basically uh, switch in and out of various uh, you know, uh, functions um, and it um, it organizes them in a way in which you can easily go back and forth. Cool. Now, um, what else? Uh, How does the tuning work on XM? Is there like also like can you scroll like numbers or is it like it just some some systems you do it and it's like you actually have to punch in the specific. So, um, oh, this is channel forward, channel back. Right. But this one actually, uh, an interesting thing that we are we are launching here is uh, a new a new engine of Sirius XM. Okay. So the Sirius XM here will be not only uh, satellite, but also uh, streaming uh, over the air, okay. over a cellular network. Okay, cool. So uh, uh, it 
it's called uh, Sirius 360 okay. and uh, allows you to have channels, uh, you know, like channel 700, which is uh, not a satellite channel. Okay. It's basically a terrestrial channel, okay. but it's part of Sirius's, uh, you know, media offer. So um, it comes with, uh, you know, the typical uh, XM subscription. Okay. And uh, uh, that's basically the, ne ne the, the newest push of Sirius, you know, who owns a lot of uh, media co uh, content generation companies. Mm -hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> what else? Oh, important is exactly uh, various uh, profiles. So uh, the, the, this UI brings the concept of uh, uh, user profiles. So it allows you to, to create multiple profiles for who's using the system. So driver or even front occupant. And then based on that, personalize the experience. Um, I wouldn't say it's it's novel now, but it's basically a step forward in uh, ensuring that um, uh, you can then um, create um, functions of the vehicle that are targeted to the, the, to the person driving, not just you know setting the seat or setting the mirrors, but also the cabin experience. Is there any way to change that other than on the setting? Like, would it be like tied to your key at all, or good 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 thing you mentioned? So. Um, <coughs> The, this system brings brings into uh, brings into the car not only the system but the Mach E uh, electrical architecture okay. brings in what we call full vehicle over the air operator. Okay. So this uh, commodity, so sync next gen, um, the telematics module, pretty much every module in the car that has uh, you know updatable software that you would typically update at the dealer becomes updatable over the air. Okay. So the whole platform can be updated. Okay. And. Uh, what you're referring to is the ability to um, uh, personalize based on um, based on um, usage of the vehicle, and that's something that we are we are planning to push over here. Okay, cool. Um, what else? Um, so that so you're saying we should actually expect that in the future? That's right. But it won't necessarily happen at launch. Uh, we haven't yet. Um, I, I cannot really talk about all the launch features. Okay. I can tell you that uh, personalization is committed for launch, okay. but um, there are personalization nuances that uh, we will reveal uh, at that future date. Okay, cool. Um, projection services, so um, CarPlay, uh, Google, Google's projection system, uh, Android, Auto. Android Auto, right? they are all there. Okay. Uh, they also come in a uh, wireless, wireless variant, so you don't necessarily need to plug in your cable. That's not new. Uh, most OEMs are doing it, um, so we're not trying to uh, push the system to say no, you can't do it. Of course, you can. But what we are offering is um, an upgrade in most of the um, uh, capabilities of the vehicle that bridge the gap that existed, uh, you know, in recent years between what the um, what the state of art, you know, phone experience is. Let's say Google Maps or you know Apple Maps and uh, ways compared to what you had in the cars, which was typically three years behind. Mm -hmm. So right now we, we are deploying um, for for navigation, so uh, your map and nav, as well as the voice recognition, we are deploying um, uh, hybrid engines. Okay. Uh, hybrid meaning um, it's uh, um, uh, both in the car and in the cloud. Okay. So what we are rolling out with this uh, Maki -E is the uh, always connected car. Okay. So your car, car is always connected to the fourth cloud, okay. and then through the fourth cloud connected to third party clouds. Okay. So uh, uh, natural language processing, so recognizing uh, uh, the conversation, uh, recognizing the voice commands. Uh, uh, if you are connected, so if you are in connectivity range, uh, using the onboard uh, modem, okay. the, the car, right? Um, sends all the commands to the cloud, they get processed and come back like Siri okay. or like the Google system. Okay. And that allows for, um, you know, deploying a far, far higher compute capability and a more uh, complex engine to recognize your commands. But if you're not, um, uh, there is an onboard uh, engine that also is able to recognize uh, your commands. So uh, similar natural language processing elements, but it will not have access to say, tell me what's the temperature in Montreal right now, okay. or tell me something about New York. Okay. Uh, it will be localized, okay. but it will have similar recognition capabilities to what you expect from Siri, from Google Assistant. Right? So more natural conversation, less of a you know uh, frustrating, you know, robotized way which tests the patience of most drivers yeah. you know because yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. uh, whatever happens you know <laughs> some misunderstanding exists between yeah, for sure. commands. so 